Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Confessions, a series where you tell me your worst and most egregious Yu-Gi-Oh! sins, and I do my best not to judge you, or smite you. <laughs> Enter in the code Yu-Gi-Jesus on Metamats.com for 10% off of your order. Metamats.com is the best sponsor in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! by... A lot. They make the best mats by a lot too. Just saying. All right, let's get this open and start with these sins. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, but in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sins episode six, you said not to tear up our cards. Huh? I really don't know what episode we're on. <laughs> so I went and bowed a card I don't give a fuck about and tore it to say no and to give myself a laugh. Although I'll never do it again. It's why while I'm typing this, I feel bad. Oh well, worth the laugh, I guess. Uh. I think I would say it was worth it. It was a Dark Lord card. Yeah, that, that deck's really bad. <laughs> no, but seriously, as a rule of thumb, yeah, maybe don't tear up your cards. But it's your property, so you can do whatever you want with your own property. Just don't tear up other people's cards without their permission. That would be the sin. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I've sinned several years ago. I sold away my, to a local card shop a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards because I needed the money that the sin was selling away my only Air Neos card, believing that he will get reprinted in the future. And this was long before I discovered that Air Neos was never going to get reprinted. Rippin' peps. No, um, it might. I mean, don't say never. I mean, all kinds of things could get reprinted. But yeah, I mean, they've, they've, they've reprinted prize cards and all kinds of things, guys. <laughs> like, don't, don't ever say never. But yeah, uh, I will say that any batch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I sold, I, I regret it. And at one point, I had somebody else selling cards for me, and they sold a bunch of stuff that they shouldn't have. And I regret that even more, because I'm t t to this day, I'm still missing some really, really cool stuff I used to have. So yeah. Um, hang on to your cards. Like, as a rule of thumb, the best way to avoid all that is to hang on to all of your cards. But... Uh, it's not very practical to like buy up everything, <laughs> you know, but uh, just be careful out there uh, Just just be careful out there when, you, when you're selling and stuff and maybe uh, anything that's like an ultimate rare secret rare You know something, you know, that's max rarity always hang on to that forgive me Yugi Jesus for this is a large sin I am personally responsible for at least three of the most degenerate blaze Phoenix FTK builds in this game And has ever since every time an any new set comes out. I always see if I could break the death chicken again No, that is, That's just epic dude forgive Give me Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. I almost slapped a kid's fingers because he tried grabbing my ulti Dark Re Requiem Xyz Dragon and my Ghost Rare Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon that I was showing to another player at my locals. I am really, I'm generally nice to kids, but nobody touches my Ghost Rares without my permission. Yeah, uh, that sounds like really weird kid behavior. I hope that they were a kid anyways, because if they're an adult and still behaving that way, Man, they never had parents, did they? <laughs> like, wow. Is it a sin that I gave my third Dante to my girlfriend because she likes the art a lot? No, it's not. It's actually really, really sweet if you know the story, you know, because Dante went down into hell and uh, got Beatrice back. You know, he went, he went there for Beatrice, so that was, that's really, really sweet of you. No, it's not a sin. I play Flu on Ladder in Master Duel for the easy gems. I'm sure you do, especially around this time when this comment was left because, uh, yeah, the uh, win statue was still legal. So I bet you did get a lot of easy gems, <laughs> a lot of easy wins, and I respect it. I respect the easy wins. I used to play Monarchs like way back in the day for the same the same reason. I, I didn't have to like learn as much. I just played Domain and Domain Locked or, you know, summon, you know, Vanity's Fiend or, you know, <laughs> Majesty's Fiend or whatever and just won. Yeah, the same idea. Make the win statue and just kind of auto win because your opponent can't special summon or do anything. I respect it. I respect it. Look, ain't nobody got time to learn every single Yu-Gi-Oh card. Uh, there's so many. I played MTG Arena and I think I might be walking away from Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't blame you, but like going from one card game collecting useless cardboard to another card game collecting useless cardboard or nowadays, you know, collecting fake digital useless cardboard to another game collecting fake digital useless cardboard. You know, I just don't feel like you're making a good transition in life. You know, like maybe transition into something important. <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. I bought Earth Machine for my brother after he quit, and I think the deck is more fun to play than Cyber... My build being Dozer Control, aka MIT, since Earth Machine is a bit of a broad definition. Look, Cyber Dragons are the best machine deck of all time. They just are. Not only are they the best machine deck from the show and everything, you know, Zay Truesdale, you know, all that good stuff, all that good nostalgia, okay? You know, Cyber Dragon, OTK, you know, the legend that is Cyber Dragon. There's all that. But on top of everything else, Cyber Dragons 1v1 with ease any other machine deck because of Chimera Tech. Cyber Dragons eat other machine decks alive because of Chimera Tech. Cyber Dragons are the king machine deck for that. They can 1v1 any other machine deck and win with ease. 
it's just how it is. It's not my fault I picked the better machine deck. It's, it's just not my fault, guys. Not my, not my fault that I'm right all the time. <clears throat> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus. I have sinned. I like the official as I have sinned. This always cracked me up. I would always T-pose and start yelling JoJo lines in Japanese on my, on my opponent when summoning Golden Lord in, in, in an Emancipator format. Was that even a format? Like, like that deck was a deck for like zero amount of time. <laughs> but anyways, uh, forgive me, Poppy, for I'm about to sin. I want to drop everything and become a Yugi tuber. Ooh, that's just not a good idea. <laughs> Forgive me, Yuki Jesus, for my locals has sinned. There was a guy that came in with what can only be described as a playground deck. Ooh, and we beat him so badly that he hasn't been dumped. No. In my defense, I built him a budget branded deck, but he refused to play it. I should clarify that the guy was fully grown adult. He just didn't want to play an archetype. Yeah, mental health is so layered and nuanced, guys. I actually don't know how to describe this kind of behavior, but we're gonna discuss this kind of behavior more later. I will tell you that in a spoiler alert, but whatever, because I've, I've kind of briefly read over a longer message. But um, yeah, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to categorize that or describe that, except to say that it's undesirable pretend behavior exhibited by people that were raised by screens and that have attached themselves to certain things from those screens. And even that's not exactly hitting the nail on the head. But, you know, like I said, layered, like, mental health is layered and nuanced, but you guys get me. It's weird pretend behavior that a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players exhibit. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. I have given into the temptation of the runic deck and have even gone so far as to deck out and troll other runic players with it. That's, that's just dedication to the art and to the deck, right? <laughs> no, you're fine. Forgive me, Yuki Jesus, for I have sinned. I gave my blue eyes dragons to my sibling and make decks that I can win against them with. <laughs> that's like, that's like, that's, you're good, dude. That's some stupid, like, sibling rivalry crap. <laughs> that's just hilarious. Forgive me, Yuki Jesus, for I'm about to sin big time. I'm playing War Rocks. Eww. <laughs> that deck's bad. Has that deck even come out in the OCG? It wouldn't surprise me if it didn't, because the deck is not good at all. The deck is like, I remember the memes about that deck when it first came out, but all the memes were missing the point about what the archetype's based off of, which that, that whole soft disclosure, I think is, you know, in all kinds of media. Soft disclosure in all media is hilarious, but especially in Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, it's, I mean, I can't even discuss it all without getting out of character, guys. <laughs> it's so funny. Forgive me, Yugi Nona, for I have sinned for my lack of presence away from my locals. The store is shutting down for good by the end of the month, making the closest locals to me an hour away. I failed to keep my Yugi community together. <sighs> you did not fail them, they failed you. I've seen your other messages in here, I just passed one a little bit ago. You did not fail them, they failed you. Forgive me, oh messiah, for I have sinned. I have played a more factor, turn skip, and I liked it. What's, what's an a more factor? <laughs> Actually, I have no idea, but turn skip, uh, throw some salt over your shoulder or something. Yeah, maybe do some Hail Marys for that one. Turn skip is blah, blah, blah. Oh, great, Yugi Jesus. I beg thee for thy forgiveness as I have committed the sin of plagiarizing thine glorious creations. Back in high school, we had to take a mandatory French class, and one of the parts of our final project was to record a video of anything as long as we were speaking French. I was a massive fan of yours at the time, and I loved, and still do, your Will It MLG series. So for this project, I basically recorded a Will It MLG video on my favorite deck of all time, Dark Lords. I spent weeks working on it using tons of MLG green screen effects and filling it to the brim with dank memes all to the glorious background song of Meme Circus. My, my teacher said she loved it and found it very creative and gave me 100% on it. Nice. I, I guess she was so mesmerized by the dankness of dank lords that she didn't realize that all the French I spoke was just English put through an online translator and decided word for word. <laughs> I thank thee for thine MLG blessing, yet also seek penance for benefiting off of your ideas and work. I wasn't doing anything creative. <laughs> like, I was ripping off those stupid MLG videos that were already popular at the time. <laughs> and the green screen work was already done for me, dude. <laughs> also, is it is it in the future to see more Will It MLG videos? I don't think those are popular anymore, are they? I, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I think that those were falling, falling out of popularity even when I was, like, you know, parodying them for my Yu-Gi-Oh purposes. Now, if there's any, like, if there's any series that I would like to continue on the channel that I used to do, I mean, I obviously continue the show and the skits, um, you know, and I just still do the Cyber Dragon deck profiles and stuff, you know, sometimes, but, like, the, the, the one thing that I would like to continue is the, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! in five minutes or less, because, like, all of the puns and jokes are already there in Yu-Gi-Oh! It just needs to be recut, 
and re-edited, you know, to be funny because Yu-Gi-Oh was hilarious, <laughs> like on its own, like really. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was just, uh, I did like two or three episodes of it, and like I would, I would do that some more, like because I, I, I had a fun time doing it, and I think it was just, it was right on point, and I think that. Um, yeah, I think I did everything I wanted to in that series as far as like recutting Yu-Gi-Oh to show the, the ridicu ridiculousness of the original show. I think I think I got it 100% right, and so like uh, yeah, that that'd be the series that I would want to continue. I think. Forgive me, Yu-Gi Devil, for I have sinned again. You're the Yu-Gi Devil. I'm not the Yu-Gi Devil. I keep four cards in one card sleeve: Brilliant Fusion, Torrential Tribute, Tune World, and Perform H Trick Clown. And I have to agree with this next comment here, but why? <laughs> Seriously, Brilliant Fusion I understand, even though it's banned. Great card. Torrential Tribute, classic, great card. Perform Edge Trick Clown, rank four machine, great card. Toon World? Toon World's one of my favorite cards of all time, but it's not good. <laughs> like, and I like how it's not even Toon Kingdom, it's Toon World. I have so many questions. <laughs> oh, Yugi Jesus, I am here for another sin, and I hope that you will forgive them, even though he is the son of Dark Ruler Hades. So he's royalty? <laughs> a few years ago, I pulled a Thunder Dragon Colossus back when it still never had a reprint. I was very young and new to the game, so I had no idea what the card prices existed. A player much older than me took advantage of this. Uh, he said that he would give me an awesome deal. I'm, oh, I'm sure. If I gave his my, if I gave him my Colossus, he would give me a Christron avatar. The player was near his mid-twenties when I was nine years old. Wow! What a fucking loser. <laughs> like, like, seriously, I'm never that mean on this channel. Um, like, no, I'm seriously never mean on this channel at all. Um, matter of fact, I have an anti-bullying video on this channel. But, seriously, what a loser. Um, not only is it weird to be playing a children's card game, let me tell you firsthand, um, <laughs> but to then take advantage of a child? Yeah, fucking loser. I hope he's matured and has gotten better, um, has become a better person, because that is bad. My roommate and friend, we'll call him Eugene for reasons that you'll understand. Oh, I already do, bud. <laughs> Wanted to learn how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I had been playing for a few years, knew about deck building and countering meta decks. I said I would be more than happy to help him. Eugene refused to play anything other than Beatstick Vanilla Monsters, Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, Summon Skull, and Magnet Warriors, and Exodia, of course. <laughs> and when I would offer him help on building his deck, he would keep saying that he would win if I didn't play broken meta cards that should be banned. Oh my gosh, yes, I would win if you played by my rules and not the rules in general. If you played by my rules specifically, I would win every time. What's really sad is those people still won't win. <laughs> like, like they're, they're really sad and delusional. I don't know. It's that it's that weird pretend behavior that I was describing earlier that Yu-Gi-Oh players exhibit. It's it, it's it, it results from people being raised from screens and and having absent parents and stuff. And I'm not even like getting it all right right there. There's there's more to it than that. But these days, by and large, just from watching too much TV. Long story short, like looking at screens too much. Uh. I was teaching him using Black Wings. Eugene would never change his deck, saying it was the best deck in existence. <laughs> Sounds like Eugene. But when it came to playing the game, he would say that he should be allowed to play banned cards like Pot of Greed because his deck wasn't meta, but nobody else could because I don't know reasons. <laughs> it's because he's in the show. He's the show's main protagonist, and you guys are just randoms. <laughs> He, he thinks he's Yami Yugi, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Oh my gosh. Fast forward a few months and Eugene has raritied his deck. No, no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh. And my other roommate and friend, we'll call him Steve, has gotten into Yu-Gi-Oh! We would play competitively and even build obscure anti-meta decks that Steve would even win locals with. Nice. Eugene wanted to have a friendly tournament with the three of us and a few other friends. At the tournament, somehow, Eugene, because this is always what happens with these guys, they somehow pull Exodia. Yeah, Exodia in three turns against Steve. He was playing Shining Victory Luna Lights and got on a huge look how amazing of a duelist I am kind of high. And then Steve mobbed him for a 2-1 victory. Of course, the only game he won would be the one where he like, luckily got Exodia. He probably stacked to get the Exodia too. <laughs> Then Eugene got really salty the rest of the evening and went up against me. I was playing Crystal Beast, so that I should that should really tell you how casual this was. Yeah, even Crystal Beast with all the support, yes, very casual. I proceeded to 2 0 him, and Eugene went back to ranting about how I only played meta decks that should be banned. Because once again, even if you were playing by his rules, he would totally win every time, right? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I then got incredibly frustrated and yelled about how he got incredibly lucky because Steve was playing a deck that didn't 
even have all of its cards yet, and Eugene somehow managed to pull his win con. Win con. Meanwhile, when it comes to actually playing, <laughs> He refused to even learn to try how different cards interact and thought everyone should bend the rules so that he could win with an absolute shit deck. Yep. Eugene ran into his room and has never dueled me since. Steve still does though. Well, that's good at least. Yeah, like I don't know. I don't know how to break people out of that pretend behavior that they that they hold on to. I don't know. I hate to say that love and prayer are the answer, but it's really the only answer is love and prayer. I'm not even religious, guys. It's just love fixes a lot of things, you know, attention, proper attention, and uh, prayer, just good intentions and stuff, energy, you know. Um, once again, not, a, not not religious, not a hippie or anything, but these things are real. Use whatever words you want to insert. I don't fucking care. Jago had another one for us. Uh, he was talking about how he was letting a kid win until this kid flipped a floodgate on him. Then he had to go like full in, full out, you know, make sure he didn't lose to a noob. And this Bodki guy again. This guy, this guy gets it. He's hilarious. You call this a sin? You did Lord Yugi Jesus' job for him. You went easy on him, but still taught him the harsh reality of how hard Yu-Gi-Oh is. Congrats, mate. You deserve a medal. No, 200 medals in Eugene's favorite Blackwing card. <laughs> All right, we have two more sins in here, and they're, and they're being left by these guys because they know I'm like active on Discord right now. They can see me. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned, and by last time going to locals, there was a kid playing Black Wings pre-DABL, and I was playing Burning Abyss with Dimensional Barrier main deck, <laughs> and I proceeded to duo him. Like, dude, D Barrier is still such a good card. I mean, it gets everything but links, right? It gets everything but links. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned in a major way. This past weekend at locals, I got really salty. Oh no, you know you got salty. You're admitting it. This is what confessions are for. <laughs> I lost to Sun Avalon round one playing cash and brick twice around two against purely uh, after bricking in the third game of round two I screamed in my hands oh dude I'd be so mad too you're playing a way better deck I run I won round three but considering it was the last round I let my opponent claim it as a win I think I might need to take a break from Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> And on that note, I'm going to take another break for Confessions. And that was Yu-Gi-Oh! Confessions, guys. See, that wasn't so bad. Most of them are pretty innocent. Most of the sins are pretty innocent, like the guy selling his brother the Blue Eyes deck, and then knowing what he was playing, building decks against that. <laughs> you know, that's some stupid sibling rivalry crap. Pretty innocent. Other things aren't so innocent, are way more malicious, like taking advantage of kids and stuff. Like, ugh. Leave your Yu-Gi-Oh! Sins and Confessions in my Discord server. The link is down in the description. Leave them only in the Confessions channel. If you put them anywhere else, like down in this video comment section, for example, they're not going to be read. Only leave them in the Confessions channel. Uh, that's where they belong. I only open the Confessions channel on days like today where I just read them as I go. Um, I mean, I might skim through some of them, you know, beforehand or whatever, but like it's as close to my genuine reaction as you're going to get. Leave them in the Confessions channel. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, that's it. The problem with these videos is I never know how to end them. I just say bye, I guess. And I say, I could say, Stop being weird and knock it off. If, when you know you're being weird, I can do that, but like I really, yeah, I don't know how to end them, so just bye. Subscribe! <laughs>